What are the odds? I have incredible respect for the military and the FBI. But I have to ask you a question again. Are we the only ones that aren't sending pictures of ourselves naked in the Internet? Are we the only ones that aren't, you know, having sex under a desk? Is anybody in the military, in the Secret Service, or the FBI clean? Because it sure doesn't seem that way anymore. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. Discredit. Here's what keeps coming to mind. Restoring honor. When we stood together in the mall in Washington, I told you, clean the garbage out of your own life. Clean up every mess. It's pretty obvious that not everybody took that advice. And if you still haven't, I suggest you get right with right. You get right with God and those you have wronged. You do it now. Walk with integrity and merit and honor and virtue. You'll sleep well at night. You will, you'll be fine. But if you continue in wrongdoing and hiding skeletons in your closet, you're going to be found out there's a purifying fire coming and you're seeing what's happening to people right now. This, these people in Washington are really bad people. And they will use anything, any pressure point, and you will fold. This today, I believe, is all about discrediting the military while distracting the media. Now, what's allowing this to happen? Well, what's allowing this to happen is we've forgotten George Washington. This is the uh, original, there's only three of these that we know of. This is the original badge of merit certificate given by George Washington. If you zoom in, you'll be able to see a signature there. This is for a military member. George Washington knew the only way we're going to win this war is if we are people of merit. I'm telling you right now, the only way we're going to win is if we are people of honor and merit. And not be people of honor and merit, it's going to lead to more of the stuff that we have. If there's no merit or honor left, at the highest levels of our administration, of our government, in Congress, of the military, of our businesses, then real trouble is ahead. And you know what? Look at our businesses. Where's the honor? Where's the merit? Where's the virtue? We just had a guy who was running for president who uh, Saturday Night Live this weekend was making fun of because they said he was on a milk binge. We dismissed him. And we elected for more of this. Now, let me play the Broadwell clip one more time here. Listen to her. Now, I don't know if a lot of you heard this, but the CIA annex had actually um, had taken a couple of Libyan militia members prisoner, and, and they think that the attack on the consulate was an effort to try to get these prisoners back. So that, that's still being vetted. Still being vetted. Okay, the troubling language here to many on the inside is that last part. It's still being vetted. How do you know? You're a graduate student. What do you? You wrote one book. Where'd you get that information? <laughs> Not tough to figure out, is it? Second, if that's true, and we're holding Al Qaeda members there, wouldn't that go against Obama's 2009 executive order, number 13493, says we're no longer allowed to carry out detentions like this? Why is it being happened? Why is it being allowed to happen? Either agents on the ground for the CIA and the military are going rogue, or the Obama administration is up to something else. I personally don't believe we had detainees there, but we might have. I mean, who knows? I have no idea anymore. I think this goes back to gun running operations. We know from the New York Times that we are, hear me America, running guns from Libya to the Syrian border. We, we're getting the weapons in the hands of the Syrian rebels, many of whom happen to be Al-Qaeda members. No executive orders were broken here. We're not detaining anyone. We're playing the same dangerous game of the enemy is my enemy and he's my friend. We're arming terrorists. We're recreating the Osama bin Laden nightmare all over again. Bin Laden was our friend because he was the enemy of our enemy. And once he finished with them, then he promised to do to the United States what he had done to the Soviet Union. To quote him, and I'll never forget reading it, I'll get them involved in a long, protracted war. He'll get us to spend ourselves into oblivion. And then he will push and we will collapse from the inside. Congratulations, America. That's exactly what is happening. On Benghazi, were we holding the militia members? Are we running guns? 
Do we have black ops situation going on? And were they legal? Does Congress even know about them? Are we supporting Arab revolutionaries, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the video for the excuse of Benghazi? Who gave that excuse to the president, and why are they still employed? Okay, finally, the Arab Spring. How did we get the Arab Spring so wrong? Remember what the, Arab, what the administration told us about the Arab Spring. They said that it would be great and the Muslim Brotherhood, just a bunch of Jeffersonian secular guys. No chance of radicalism whatsoever. They're just, just, a, just a group of great people. And the administration was just a tad wrong on that, wasn't they? As a result, Egypt is now in the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood. They were talking today about blowing up the Sphinx because it's not falling in with Sharia law. We've also had um, members of the Muslim Brotherhood meet here in the United States. Designated terrorist groups are at the White House. How did we get it so wrong? Who sold us this story? Well, you know who that is? James Clapper. James Clapper is the director of the National Intelligence, um, and, and here's just an ADD moment. You notice how nobody ever hears uh, Clapper's name thrown under the bus? Nobody ever says, boy, that guy's a dumb as, just dumb as a box of rocks, isn't he? Even though he called the Muslim Brotherhood secular, said they had no interest in running for any political office, and Diane Sawyer caught him about not knowing uh, the details of a major UK bomb plot that was busted in the UK that week. He didn't know. He's the guy who told us all of this stuff. Now yesterday I sat in the Oval Office and I, I gave you a movie scene, a movie scenario you've seen a million times that someone confronted like Petraeus was and somebody's sitting behind that desk and saying, we hate to see this come out. Just step down. There's a way out. Step down. I saw some blogs say that that was ridiculous and fanciful. But the day we found out who had that very conversation, it happened allegedly on election day. Quote, he, Petraeus, resigned last week after being told to do so by the, national, uh, the director of the National Intelligence, James R. Clapper. Hmm. Clapper called Petraeus that night and urged him to resign. Clapper informed the White House late Wednesday, and aides informed the president Thursday morning before Petraeus came to personally hand in his resignation. Wow! There's a lot going on there. First of all, it's James Clapper who sat down and said, you're going to resign. And he called the White House, and they told the president the next day. So Clapper is calling the shots? The secular Muslim Brotherhood guy is calling the shots and not telling the president, even in notifying him that I'm going to tell him to step down. Really? Would you do that with your boss? Because I wouldn't. That's scary. It's scary because we're on the wrong side time and time again. We are in bed with Egypt's revolution. We are in bed with Libyan rebels who had radical groups, including Al-Qaeda, among their ranks. We are in bed with the Syrian rebels now who have Al-Qaeda among their ranks. We're arming them. We are in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood, both in Egypt and all through the Middle East and here in America. This is a group that clearly articulated their plans to overthrow America in something called the Project. It is designed to destroy America from the inside, and the administration knows it, and so does your congressman and senator. If they don't, they need to get on the stick. That group has spawned nearly every violent radical group, and Islamic radical group in the entire world, including Osama bin Laden. This is not an accident. It's not. But what does the sex scandal, Benghazi, and the Arab Spring all have in common? Because they are all linked. Fundamental transformation. Fundamental transformation in the Middle East. Fundamental transformation of the Middle East here. Fundamental transformation of Libya here. And fundamental transformation of our military and our society. It's the fundamental transformation of the world. It's actually global revolution. That's it. Now your friends will say, that's crazy. Really? Push them on the plausibility of the press's story. Push them, ask, just ask them questions. Hey, Obama really didn't know about this until Wednesday? 
If you're the President of the United States and General Petraeus had to step down because of a scandal and it was all revolving around Benghazi and everything else right before he went, wouldn't you want somebody to come into your office and say, hey, Mr. President, um, before I make this decision, I'm going to recommend that he resigns. But I have to tell you, that they just made this decision? If the president didn't know, wouldn't you fire a few people and say, hey, I'm the president of the United States? Why has no one been fired? Why? Why? If they didn't know, he was having sex with this woman while they were vetting him for the CIA. If that happened, and the president didn't know, and nobody told anybody, why wouldn't they fire them? Don't you think that's important? The president has to be informed on things like this, or it puts our security at risk. Demand that there are hearings right now. This story is going to drag on. They're using the Clinton strategy. Stories about sex under the desk, they'll keep coming out, and fewer and fewer people will care about what the real story is. They're the ones making this about sex. We're making this about Navy SEALs that were killed, the president doing nothing or someone not doing anything, and more importantly, gun running and being in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. That's what this story is about. And America's threshold for old guy sex talk is high for a little while, but it doesn't last long. It is the pattern of history and the pattern of revolution. Follow the revolutionaries and be ready for it.